everyone. Hope you guys are having a great week. I am going to go over what I heard inside my room with the DCS Rossini and the MSB reference. Before I do that, please subscribe, hit that like button. You guys know it means a lot to me when you guys support me. Um, and so that hopefully we can continue to do this. More shootouts will be coming your way. New things that I'll be showing you all. A lot of myths, a lot of things that I think are part of this industry as a whole that very few people talk about. Uh, my goal is to essentially go over with facts, present to you guys um, different things, different components, tweaks, you name it. And you guys are ultimately the ones who decide whether you like what you heard or you did not like what you heard. Uh, what you heard. Okay? So, um, anyway. With regards to the MSB and DCS shootout. It's clear, as you guys can see, that the majority of you all selected demonstration number two on all three videos. Um, and I can understand definitely why a lot of you guys selected number two as, the, as your pr preferred uh, sound with these Wilson Audio Alexandria XLFs that are next to me. Okay. Um, remember, guys, I've said it many, many times. This is about synergy, about matching components, wearing the right shoes with the right outfit. Right. That's essentially what this is about. Uh, you can easily have a mismatch, oftentimes, um, and uh, you know, I, I guess you could say I'm pretty, pretty blessed to be able to play with a lot of different components at once. Um, it's not an easy thing to do, guys. It's very difficult to do what I do. It's extremely, extremely uh, tough to, um, you know, uh, obviously the the money that it takes to do something like this, uh, networking, your sources, people that you, people in the industry who you talk to. Um, but I'm very, very happy to say that I do have a lot of people who help me out, who uh, have instructed me, uh, who have given given me a lot of very good points of reference. Okay, but that said, I'm going to start out by saying, okay, that if you select a demonstration two or you select a demonstration one, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Both of them were special in their own ways. Uh, a case could be made for demonstration one, perhaps being uh, a lot more immediate dynamic than presentation number one and a case could be made for presentation number one sounding to some of you much more real organic if you will okay um but remember it oil it all boils down to what you are looking for and with the speakers that you uh currently have now that said you guys know i want to keep it a hundred percent real with you all my audience Okay, and I'm going to keep it 100% right at the very beginning of this video. Do not go out there spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on DAX. I think it is an extremely stupid move, in my opinion. Um, yes, I can say that because my equipment, my system is at that level where I can speak about that. Now, of course, if you have unlimited funds which I know some of you guys do, uh, great. You're blessed to have some of the best equipment. You're willing to you know, pony up $100,000, $200,000 for a DAC and you don't care what it costs as long as you have the best of the best. Kudos to you. But those of you who are with limited finances and you have to make a real decision as far as what DAC you should go for, remember, the money that you put out specifically talking about DAX, okay, doesn't necessarily mean you're getting that much more performance. Yes, this is applicable to all components, not just DAX, but I feel I'm a strong believer. I'm a strong believer. I feel this is a lot more relevant with DAX. Guys, the laws of diminishing returns with DAX is simply 
huge, massive. You are going to have a DAC that costs you hypothetically 20 grand and you're going to have to spend 50 grand to get marginal returns, 10%, 15%, a little more, a few more bells and whistles here in the presentation, a little more sizzle at the top. It's going to cost you 30 grand more. You have to decide if that's what you want to do. Now, of course, if you're coming from affordable streamers, and yes, I'm sorry, I am reviewing a lot of ultra high-end stuff. If you're coming from the affordable streamers like the Lumens of the World, if you're coming from the streamers like Blue Sound, if you're coming from more of the normal gear, and you're moving up to a DCS or an MSB, yes, I completely agree. Definitely is going to show you a mark improvement uh, in the entire presentation. But once you've gotten to that point and you're jumping and hopping around the top of the line, let's say esoterics, DCS, and whether it's the Rossini, the Vivaldi, which I had, you guys know I had the Vivaldi, um, and MSBs of the world. Guys, that's where things get tricky. I am telling you right now, I wouldn't go out there running around trying to find a reason to burn another $30,000 on a DAC. I believe once you get to a certain point with a DAC, it is hard, very difficult to make a mark improvement. It's going to, and again, oftentimes it's very system dependent, okay? It really has to do with the rest of your system more than anything. Um, I can say to you that, you know, all the money that I've spent in different Forms, you know, whether it's amplifiers, spring amplifiers, um, sources, you name it, speakers. I can say that the DAC conversation for me is a little bit salty. Why? Because, guys, it's a lot of money. And the reality is we are really, really, really at the mercy of the streaming services. I mean, I stream. You guys know that. That's There's nothing new about that. You guys know I stream. That's what I do. I don't buy CDs. I do not do vinyl. Yes, some of you guys want me to do vinyl. Guys, I just don't have the time. I can't sustain going out there and buying records, cleaning them, storing them. I don't have time for that. Now, I'm not knocking on those of you who love to do that. I'm more power to you. Great. But I just can't do that. I, I'm not a vinyl guy. Maybe one day I will, but I've said it many times I'm not. So let's stick to the digital conversation. So... Remember, you can spend 40 grand, 50 grand on a DAC, and then the next one is 100 grand. Remember, guys, you're still, you're trying to get a DAC to make you vodka and tequila, but you're feeding it grapes. You understand what I'm saying? This is what I wanted to say. A DAC cannot make you vodka or tequila if all you're putting in it are grapes. All it's going to be able to do for you is wine, whether it's a little more sour, sweeter, bitter, whatever you want to call it. And that's what I'm trying to make you guys comprehend. We are streaming. There is a limitation with streaming. I, don't, I believe we are tapped out with streaming. Manufacturers are going to constantly try to build a better DAC by putting external power supplies, uh, batteries inside, um, you know, off the grid, a better power core. Yes, you can do all of that, but you're still streaming, guys. You're still, you're capped. The streaming services are the bottleneck. So this is why I'm saying to you all, if you're streaming, specifically the streamers like me, be careful spending your money on more expensive DACs. Be very careful. You might be shocked at the at how much you might be shocked at how little you're going to get in return for the huge amount of money you're going to spend. Okay? Um, but anyway, that's it. I am going to go over some of the attributes that I heard in the room. 